let's look at random numbers and seeding a random number generator. So first of all, I have a function get num that just sends me back a random number from zero to nine. And I am having, I have a for loop right here, which is going to print out five of these numbers and just display them on the screen. So if I run this right now, run my code, it prints out one, seven, four, zero, nine. So those are the numbers. I run it again and it's one, seven, four, zero, nine. I run it again and it's one, seven, four, zero, nine. You start saying, well, wait a second. These are random. Why are they the same number each time? Well, I need to see the random number generator. The, the random number generator just generates numbers from a list and then it moves the next number in the list. So what I want to do is see the random number generator. So there's lots of different places we could do it. So we could try doing it in this function. So we could seed right here. So seed location one. And then we could have another place where we seed it inside of my for loop right here. So this would be my seed location two. And then I could put it maybe right here. We'll do a seed location three. And let's look at each one of these locations and see which one works the best. And the way we're going to seed it is we're going to seed it by, well, using time to do that. So I'm going to do an unsigned int, and this will be my seed. And my seed is going to be equal to a static cast. And it's going to be unsigned int because that's what I'm putting it in. And I am taking time and I'm passing it the null pointer. So this right here will generate me a time, well, number, unsigned integer. Then I'm going to use the srand function and pass in my seed. Okay. And while I'm doing this, we'll just see how well this works. So run this, run my code. And that's interesting. All of them are fours. I run my code again. All of them are zeros. I run my code again. All of them are zeros. I run my code again. All of them are sixes. Every single one is the exact same number. So you might say, well, why is that? Well, the reason is because the time doesn't usually change much between each call. If it, if time did change fast enough, then I would get a series of numbers followed by a series of a different number. So this C location is a bad location. So we'll take this code and we will cut it. Oops. And we'll move it to location number two inside this for loop. Fine. We'll see it in here. And then I run this code and run the code. And once again, all sixes run the code again, all nines run the code again, all sixes. So it seems like it has the same problem. So that doesn't work because what's happening is reseeding it and restarting over my location each time. So I take this and I cut it again and I put it into location number three. This one only gets called one time, right? When the program starts, it gets called. And then everything after that doesn't get called anymore. So let's go ahead and run the code and see what happens. If I run the code. I get seven, five, six, nine, zero. I run the code again. Three, one, one, four, five. I run the code again. Six, seven, four, three, seven. You can see that these numbers are different each time it runs. So, if you're looking for a good place to seed your random number generator, you should probably put it right there in the beginning of main before you call any functions or anything else. That way it's seeded up front and you don't have to worry about seeding it more than once. Just seed it one time.